99 dates and no serious prospects, we're in the studio today with David Kaufman, a seasoned blind dater who vows to go online after Blind Date 100. We're counting down to David's online debut. I'm Andrea Sirtash, and this is On Date. <laughs> What do you think about blind dates? I think it's kind of fun. I would definitely go on more blind dates. No, I think I, I'm actually pretty done. I'm done with going on blind dates. Yeah. You know, as I say, everyone I've been on was disastrous, but yeah, I'd still, it wouldn't put me off. I don't think so. Blind dates aren't a good idea. There's an element of surprise there that even if it's a good surprise or a bad surprise, I mean, I think it's great to just meet, you know, meet people. I'd consider going on a blind date if it was with some, um, somebody I knew well set me up. David Kaufman is a classic good catch. He's cute, funny, smart, and successful. He doesn't want to settle when he settles down, and he's still looking for his wife. This month, David will go on his 100th blind date. If this one's not a match, he's going to go online in the hopes of finding one. So David, 100 blind dates, how did you get there? How do you keep track? It's been a long time. It's been over 15 years, and at first I just kind of didn't keep track. And then one day somebody said, how many blind dates have you been on? And it was about five or six. And then I went on the next one and it, it was seven. And then all of a sudden people were like, oh, what number are you on? So I made sure that I wrote them all down and now I keep track. And when I put somebody in my address book, I just put a little BD 93 <laughs> or whatever number they are so I don't mess up. Sometimes I'm challenged on it. People don't believe me. Can so I, I play the blind it. date game? Can I say like, Tell me about 47. Would you be able to do that? No, there's special ones that I do remember. I remember 45 and 57. They were great, but I couldn't, I could probably only think of four or five of them out of the hundred at this point. Who is setting you up on a, at this point, 99 blind dates? Who is doing it's that? It's really pretty random. I get so many different people that do it, and I think because I talk about it a lot, yeah. that people think of me instantly. The last blind date I was set up on was actually kind of interesting. I got into a cab, and the cabbie calls himself Cupid's Cabbie, and he sets up his passengers on blind dates. Supposedly, he was on the Today Show and the Wall Street Journal. He had all these laminated articles. <laughs> so what are you looking for? That's a tough question. I think it's, when I look back at all my blind dates, there's not that many commonalities between them. I think I've had different parts of people that I really liked and then there's something that, that stands in the way. And you know, I don't think it's me, but obviously after 99, I, I need to explore that possibility. Um, but you know, I'm just looking for somebody that I feel a connection with, that's a good person that I'm attracted to, that's intelligent, the, the normal things. I don't have those weird eliminators that I think some people do. Right, you just wanna feel probably an organic connection. Exactly. So, yeah. so then you've waited to go online. I know online is coming up if 100 is not a match. Why have you waited? I think from the beginning I always perceived it as a negative connotation. I was a little afraid of putting myself out there and being online. And now I just recently went to a wedding and actually in their vows the, the bride was talking about. And when I put up my profile I never <laughs> thought I would meet somebody. So it's so out there at this point that I figure if everybody else is doing it, maybe I could give it a shot. Yeah, there are millions and millions of people doing it. I know, I know. I'm just afraid to have it out there. I just, uh, What do you think is going to really... happen? What do you think is going to happen when you go online? I don't know. I think I'm going to be like in an important business meeting and somebody's going to put up my profile and it'll say, Dave likes long walks on the beach. And <laughs> it's just mixing my, my business and pleasure lives. What do you do when you don't want to be set up with someone who asks you to meet someone? Usually it's pretty easy. I'll just say that I'm dating somebody else or I don't have time. And some of my friends really push. I've had friends that said, oh, I had a dream that you two were going to be together. And they really force it. But usually I could get out of it. Because there is etiquette. I don't know if you know that. Um, but it, you have to, of course, be gracious. You don't have to go on every blind date that your grandmother's best friend sets you up on. Right. But um, definitely appreciate the thought, as I'm sure you do. And if someone sets you up, it's really good and important to follow up with them, to thank them for making the connection, even if it's not a connection. Do you do that? Right. Not every time, because I think if it's not a connection, that I get concerned that if I call the person who set me up, then they're going to hear from that person that I wasn't interested. So I'd rather the person kind of figures it out themselves when I don't call. So. 
It's just a, a it's, fine it's, line to walk. I guess the question for me is, what do you do with the person you went out with? Do I have to call them and tell them I don't want to go out with them again? Let's say I went on one date or two or three. The best thing, and I actually did a segment just on this topic because it's a common question, um, better to keep it clean at the end of the night. Don't pretend you're going to follow up if you're not and just keep it thank you and good night, take care and keep it clean. But you can check out my advice on that because I explain that in more detail. Okay. okay. So after 99 blind dates, I'm sure you have some advice to share with people on how to blind date effectively. Sure. I think one tip and the way I think about it is if you're not at your best on the first date, don't worry about it because you shouldn't be nervous during that date. And if you're not at your best, people who you're dating only have better things to see on future dates. But you don't try not to be at your best, right? Like no, you, don't you don't show up in pajamas and get no, drunk. No, and, nothing okay. like that. But you know, sometimes people always say, I shouldn't tell people that I count my blind dates. And sometimes on that blind date, I do feel comfortable telling that person. And people are like, that, that's crazy. But I figure if they could put up with my neuroses on that first date, then they'll like me going forward. Very interesting theory. Actually, and I do think what you said about taking the pressure off is really important in all of dating. So that's, that's a very good point. I also think you attract what you put out. So you want to you want to put on your best face, but not put all the pressure that this has to be it. Right, exactly. Try to be your best, but if you're not, then that's okay too. Good advice. Here's my blind date etiquette. Always thank the individual who set you up. Appreciate the thought. You don't always have to accept a blind date offer. Just be gracious. Don't feel pressured to please the person who set you up. If you're not interested in your blind date, that's okay. So if you're online, look out for David. Though who knows, maybe 100 will be your match. I hope so. Good luck. Thanks a lot. And thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for watching On Dating. And remember, even a bad date makes a great story. So get out there and have some fun. I'm Andrea Sirtash. See you next time.